Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Steam Will Do That with your host, Sanchez. This time we are looking at a game called Red Orchestra 2 Heroes of Stalingrad. That's in Russia. So it's a F it's World War II FPS developed by developed and published by Tripwire, who also does Killing Floor. So yeah. Um it's about Russians fighting against the Germans in World War II, as you could probably garner from the title and the setting. Uh, it's a prequel to a game called Red Orchestra Ost Front 4145, which was the first game. It's all, This game's also a Windows exclusive, I found out, so that's pretty cool. Uh, now for the cool stuff. It's a It's got first-person collision detecting. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. So it's got first person cover and blind firing, which I think is pretty neat. I don't know if any FPSs have that. I'm not an FPS guy. Battlefield 3, Dale says. Uh, the, the guns are really authentic looking and very detailed. Uh, they also, have, when you fire them, they have bullet drop and spin, which is really neat. It adds to the authenticity of the game. Um, also, there's no HUD. So you can't, there's no ammo count, you can't see how much bullets you have left. Um, this game, I also found out while I was playing, has tanks, which is cool. And what's cooler is that when you drive the tanks, you can hardly see out of them because they've got those two little slots in the front for like windows, which also adds to the authenticity. This game should be called Red Orchestra 2 Authenticity. That's a cool name. Um, and like real tanks, they have parts of them that are stronger than others. Like if you shoot the front of a tank, it won't do as much damage as if you do shoot at the side of it because of the armor plating and whatnot. Um, when the game was launched, there were two tanks, the Panzer IV and the T-34. T-34 is a Russian tank and the Panzer was a German tank. They were going to release some more vehicles as the game went on and since the game came out in 2011. They probably have released the other vehicles. I only got to drive one tank and I didn't know which one it was. Uh, also, the guy who did the music for the Mass Effect trilogy did the scoring for this game. So that's cool if you're a Mass Effect fan, and he's a fan of the music. They're releasing an expansion for this game in, uh, coming out this year. I'm not sure what time this year though. It's called Rising Storm and it's going to be about the Pacific campaign of World War II. So, with the Japanese and all those islands down there. Um, like I said, this game is very authentic looking, it's very realistic. And I'm not a not an FPS fan, but this game is good. Like it's a lot better than Modern Warfare 3, uh, Black Ox, and all those other ones. Um, got very big battlefields, and the buildings in the battlefields are very detailed. Like. There's crumbling buildings, and you can see all the little individual bricks and whatnot. As far as I know, it doesn't have uh, destructible environments, though, which sucks, because that's always a good thing. And another cool part is when you get shot, it's one shot, one kill most times. Depends on where you get hit, though. If you get hit in the head, you're going to die. If you get hit in the arm, you bandage yourself up. Uh, and the multiplayer is where the game really shines. There's usually six or seven classes for each game, but that all depends on which map you're playing and what game type is. Because, because what, what the game type is, rather. There's classic games, which are classic. There's action games, which are more action-y, <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know how to explain that one. And when you play, the, the screen the screen effects for different things that happen. Like, if you're getting suppressed by fire, you'll s the color will bleed from the screen. And if you're looking down your scope, you can actually hear yourself breathing. It's really neat. And, and I'm going to talk about the classes. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the soldier classes. There's a rifleman, which is pretty straightforward. It's a basic infantry unit. Assault trooper. It's pretty much just a souped-up rifleman. Veteran ri Rifleman, which is a better Rifleman, obviously, since it's a Veteran. Veterans are always better. Veteran, should be called. There's the Engineer, which is 
It's pretty really straightforward again. You wreck dispensers and whatnot. Anti tank riflemen. Tank hunters. They shoot tanks. Marksman, which is a sniper class. There is a machine gunner who carries around a machine gun. Yeah, it's essentially pretty straightforward. There's no better class. Actually, it's it's all, you know, dependent on <laughs> how you play and what you like. They must be shitting their uh, let's see. Now we're going to talk about the officer classes. There's two of them. There's a squad leader. You're kind of like a scout because you have binoculars that you can scan the battlefield and whatnot with. And you can also throw smoke grenades to pr provide cover for your troops. You're like good guy squad leader. And then there's the commander, which is essentially a squad leader, but you have a radio which you can use to call in reinforcements, recon planes, and other off-map strikes, like, like like um, you shoot their fuel reserves so their tanks get less fuel and whatnot. But now the tanker classes, there's two of them as well. There's a tank commander, which is essentially is just the driver of the tank, and then there's the tank crew, which can take up any part of the tank, like the uh, the guy who shoots the cannon, the, or the guy who shoots the little guns on the side. The only part in the tank they can't use is the loader. I'm guessing because that's just done by AI. 